Hey guys, what's up? So this is a project for Chair 147 entitled Fluid Dynamics. And we're going to have a brief overview of the several methods of separating particles from gases. The first method, which may be the most familiar to all of us, is filtration. Then we have fluidization, sedimentation, flotation. Another familiar method would be centrifugation. And the last but not the least would be the use of cyclone separators. For this purpose, we're only going to focus on cyclone separation. Other topics, such as I have said, would be discussed by the other groups. And I will send you the links. And the first question that comes to our mind is, what is a cyclone separator? Let's first define what is a cyclone separator. A cyclone separator is the most common type of equipment used to separate small solid particles from the fluid. For the sake of visual clarity, let us draw a cyclone separator. It is identified by its main feature. A vertical cylinder with a conical bottom with no moving parts. It primarily functions by inputting gas solid particle mixture tangentially and then inducing the fluid to undergo a rotating and spiraling pattern. The rotating motion then imparts centrifugal force to the particles which are thrown outwards to the walls of the vessel and then fall by the action of gravity. The labels would refer to the parts of the cyclone separator. Now let's proceed to the discussion of flow characteristics. The radial pressure gradient given by the rotational flow in the force vortex together with the frictional pressure losses at the gas inlet and outlet and loss due to changes in the direction of the flow is characterized as the total pressure drop. This pressure drop delta P is related to a characteristic velocity V and this relationship can be seen in a resistance coefficient, the Euler's number. The Euler's number is given by the equation EU is equal to delta P over rho sub F times V squared over 2, where rho sub F is the gas density and characteristic velocity V can be derived from the equation V is equal to 4Q over pi times D squared, with Q being the gas flow rate and D as the inside diameter of the cyclone. Now let's proceed to the discussion of equipment design. The classical cyclone design, or abbreviated as CCD, it is the standard and most acceptable method for equipment design. The design engineer is assumed to have the knowledge of the following. The flow conditions, particulate matter concentrations and particle size distribution, and the type of cyclone to be designed, whether it be high efficiency, conventional, or high throughput, or rate of production. Now, here is a table showing the standard cyclone dimensions. Now, you can choose from any type of cyclone, whether it be high efficiency, conventional or high throughput. If you have already chosen your desired cyclone type, you can now take a look at the values of the dimensions, whether it be the body diameter, the height of the inlet, 
and it goes on for the rest. Now, let's proceed to the steps of designing an equipment. The first step would be determining the number of effective turns. Higher number of effective turns is equivalent to higher collection efficiency. This is given by the formula n is equal to 1 over h times the sum of l sub b plus l sub c over 2, wherein n is equal to the number of turns inside the device, it's a unitless value, h is the height of the inlet duct, l sub b is the length of the cyclone body, and l sub c is the vertical length of the cyclone cone. The second step would be determining the cut point diameter. The cyclone's cut point is the aerodynamic equivalent diameter of the particle collected with 50% efficiency. Higher cut point diameter, higher collection efficiency. This is given by the formula B sub PC is equal to the square root of 9 times nu times W all over 2 pi times n sub e times v sub i times the difference of rho sub p minus rho sub g, wherein d sub pc is the diameter of the smallest particle that will be collected by the cyclone, nu is the gas viscosity, w is the width of the inlet, n sub e is equal to 1 h times lv plus lc over 2, which is the number of turns, V sub i is the inlet gas velocity, rho sub p is the particle density, and rho sub g is the density of the fluid. The last step would be the fractional efficiency curve. It is an empirical model, it is dependent on particle size, and it measures the collection efficiency. This is given by the formula nu sub j is equal to 1 over 1 plus the square of the ratio of d sub pc and d sub pj wherein nu sub j is the collection efficiency of particles in the jate size range. This is this ranges between 0 to 1. And d sub pj is the characteristic diameter of the jate particle size range. Let's proceed to the discussion of the scale-up of cyclones. The scale-up of cyclones is based on a dimensionless group, the Stokes number, which characterizes the separation performance of a family of geometrically similar cyclones. The Stokes number is defined as being equal to x sub 50 squared times rho sub p times v over 18 nu times d, wherein x sub 50 is equal to the cut size, nu is the gas viscosity, rho is the solids density, v is the characteristic velocity, and d is the diameter of the body. Analysis shows that for a gas carrying particles in a duct, the Stokes number is the dimensionless ratio of the force required to cause a particle to change direction and the drag force available to bring about that change in direction. The greater the value of the Stokes number above unity, or 1, the greater is the tendency for particles 
to impact with the airway walls and so be captured. Again, let's draw a cyclone separator. Remember, we have a gas feed entering tangentially through an inlet, and that gas feed has particles. Now, if the Stokes number is higher than unity, then there will be a lot more tendency for those particles to hit the walls and then be captured. Therefore, the Stokes number is an important dimensionless number when we are dealing with cyclone separators. It is assumed that particles on entering a cyclone quickly reach their terminal settling velocities. Particle sizes are usually so small that Stokes law is considered valid. For centrifugal motion, the terminal radial velocity V sub TR is given by the equation below. V sub TR is equal to omega squared times R times D sub P squared times rho sub p minus rho all over 18 nu, wherein omega is the angular velocity, r is the radius of the cyclone separator, d sub p is the particle diameter, rho sub p is the particle density, rho is the gas density, and nu is the gas viscosity. Since omega is equal to V sub tan over R, wherein V sub tan is the tangential velocity of the particle at radius R, we substitute it to the aforementioned equation and it becomes V sub TR is equal to V sub T times V sub tan squared over G R. The higher the terminal velocity, the greater the radial velocity and the easier it should be to settle the particle at the walls. However, the evaluation of the radial velocity is difficult since it is a function of gravitational terminal velocity, tangential velocity, and position radially and axially in the cyclone. Hence, the following empirical equation is often used. To understand the importance of terminal settling velocities in the discussion of cyclone separators, let's again draw a cyclone separator. Again, we draw the gas feed, which is the dirty air, entering the inlet at the top of the cyclone separator. Also, we draw where the Dirt particles are collected at the bottom and where clean air goes out at the top. Remember that the gas feed has particles of differing sizes, whether it be large or small. Small particles have smaller settling velocities and do not have time to reach the wall to be collected. Hence, they leave with the exit air in a cycle. Larger particles are more readily collected. The efficiency of the separation for a given particle diameter is defined as the mass fraction of the size particles that are collected. Cyclone grade efficiency in practice. In practice, 
gas velocity fluctuations and particle-particle interactions result in some particles larger than the critical particle size being lost and some of the particles smaller than the critical particle size being collected. Consequently, in practice, the cyclone does not achieve such a sharp cutoff as predicted by the theoretical analysis above. In common with other separation devices in which body forces are opposed by drag forces, the grade efficiency curve for gas cyclones is usually S-shaped. For such a curve, the particle size for which the grade efficiency is 50%, the critical particle size is often used as a single measurement of the efficiency of the cyclone. The 50 particle size is also known as the equiprobable size since it is that size of particle which has a 50% probability of appearing in the coarse product. This also means that in a large population of particles, 50% of the particles of this size will appear in the coarse product. X sub 50 is sometimes referred to as the cut size of the cyclone or other separation device. The concept of X sub 50 cut size is useful where the efficiency of a cyclone is to be expressed as a single number independent of the feed solid size distribution, such as in scale-up calculation. Let's now proceed to the discussion of the range of operation of a cyclone separator. The total separation efficiency and pressure drop varies with gas flow rate. Let us draw a graph relating the total efficiency, the gas flow rate, and the pressure drop. As we can see here, we have two curves. We have the total efficiency curve at the top, and at the bottom, we have the pressure drop curve. Theory predicts that efficiency increases with increasing gas flow rate. However, in practice, the total efficiency curve falls away at high flow rates because reentrainment of separated solids increases with increased turbulence at high velocities. This is why the actual curve falls down a little bit. Optimum operation is achieved somewhere between points A and B where Maximum total separation efficiency is achieved with reasonable pressure loss and hence reasonable power consumption. The position of point B changes only slightly for different dusts. Let's erase some parts of the graph so I can discuss further on it. So beyond point B, the total efficiency drops. However, if you go below point A, the cyclone would not have the velocity to produce the vortex. So this ends our discussion on the range of operation. Now let's answer some sample problems.
Determine the diameter and number of gas cyclones required to treat 2 cubic meters per second of ambient air with viscosity equal to 18.25 times 10 to the negative 6 pascal second, density of 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter, laden with solids of density 1000 kilogram per cubic meter at a suitable pressure drop and with a cut size of 4 micrometers. Use a Stairmand high efficiency cyclone for which the Euler's number is equal to 320 and the Stokes number is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. The optimum pressure drop would be 1177.2 pascals. The first thing to do is to write all the given values provided by the problem. The gas flow rate is equal to 2 cubic meters per second, the viscosity of the gas being 18.25 times 10 to the negative 6 pascal second, the density of the fluid 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter, the density of the particle being 1000 kilogram per cubic meter, the Euler's number is equal to 320, Stokes number is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4, and the optimum delta P is equal to 1177.2 pascals. The required values are the diameter of the cyclone and the number of cyclones. To solve this problem, we need to first solve the characteristic velocity. We can solve for the characteristic velocity by using the formula the Euler's number is equal to the delta P over rho sub f times v squared over 2. We substitute the values given by the problem and we can get that the characteristic velocity is equal to 2.4761 meters per second. Please do take note of the solved characteristic velocity. The second step in solving this problem is to solve for the diameter of the cyclone. We can solve for the diameter of the cyclone by using the formula V is equal to 4Q over pi times D squared. Again, we substitute the values and we get that the diameter of the cyclone is equal to 1.0141 meters. Afterwards, we solve for the cut size, and to solve this cut size, we can use the formula of the Stokes number, which is equal to the particle cut size squared times the density of the particle times the velocity all over 18 times the viscosity of the gas times the diameter of the cyclone. Substituting the values, we get that the particle size is equal to 4.34 micrometers, which is larger than 4. Therefore, it's too high. And we have to solve again. Let's erase the board to give space for solutions. We can assume that there are n number of cyclones in parallel required and therefore the flow is evenly split. And since it is evenly split, we can say that the individual gas flow rate is equal to the overall gas flow rate, which is 2 cubic meters per second, over the n number of cyclones. We then derive for the new diameter of the cyclone by using the formula again, V is equal to 4Q over pi times d squared, and we are going to use the same characteristic velocity. However, this time, for Q is equal to 2 over n. We therefore get the, the expression 
for D is equal to 1.0141 over N raised to 0 0.5. We can now solve for the number of cyclones by using again the formula for the Stokes number. We substitute the values for the Stokes number, the particle cut size being equal to 4 micrometers, the characteristic velocity as we have solved earlier. Solving, we get that n is equal to 1.386. However, we need to raise it to a whole number. Therefore, we get that n is equal to 2. Since we already have an idea for the required number of cyclones, we can use the number of cyclones in determining the new diameter for the cyclone separator. We now get the value for the cyclone separator diameter to be equal to 0 0.7171 meters. Since we already have an idea for the new cyclone diameter, we can now use the formula for the Stokes number and we substitute the new diameter, the same characteristic velocity, and we get that the particle cut size is equal to 3.6495 micrometers, which is a pass. Let's now proceed to the second sample problem. Test on a reverse flow gas cyclone to give the results shown in the table below. We have feed size analysis and coarse product size analysis in terms of grams corresponding to their size ranges in terms of micrometers. It is required to determine the total efficiency of the cyclone. Also, we need to plot the grade efficiency curve and show that the critical particle cut size is 10 micrometers. The dimensionless constants describing this cyclone are the Euler's number being equal to 384 and the Stokes number being equal to 1 times 10 raised to negative 3. Determine the diameter and number of cyclones to be operated in parallel to achieve this cut size when handling 10 cubic meters per second of a gas of density 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter and viscosity 18.4 times 10 raised to 6 pascal seconds laden with dust of particle density 2,500 kilograms per cubic meter. The available pressure drop is 1,200 pascals. I, also, I forgot it's raised to negative 6 for the viscosity. And lastly, what is the actual cut size of your design? Let's now solve the problem. To solve for the total efficiency of the cyclone, we need to first obtain the mass of the feed and the mass of the coarse feed. To obtain the mass of the feed, we're just going to take the summation of all the individual masses of the feed and we're going to do the same for the mass of the coarse feed. We get that the mass of the feed and the mass of the coarse feed to be equal to 100 grams and 68.56 grams respectively. The total efficiency represented by E sub T is equal to the mass of the coarse feed divided by the mass of the feed. So, substituting the values 68.56 divided by 100, we get that the total efficiency is equal to 68.56%. Now, let's move on. Again, we need to plot the grade efficiency curve and show that the critical particle cut size is equal to 10 micrometers. Now, the grade efficiency represented by g's of x is equal to the individual mass of the coarse feed divided by the individual mass of the feed. So, for each size range, we get 
varying values of grade efficiency. Let's say for the size range 0 to 5 micrometers, we have a grade efficiency of 0 0.01, for 5 to 10, 0 0.235, and it goes on for the rest. Plotting the values of the grade efficiency against the particle cut size, we now get this graph. Now we need to solve for the diameter of the cyclone separator and the number of cyclone separators required. We can manipulate again the formula for the Euler's number which is equal to delta P over rho sub F times V squared over 2 to solve for the characteristic velocity. We now get that the expression for the characteristic velocity is the square root of 2 times delta P over the Euler's number times rho sub f. Substituting the values, we get that the characteristic velocity is equal to 2.282 meters per second. We then derive for the new diameter of the cyclone by using the formula again, v is equal to 4q over pi times d squared, and we are going to use the same characteristic velocity, however this time for q, is equal to 2 over n. We therefore get the, the expression for d is equal to 1.0141 over n raised to 0 0.5. We now then substitute the expression for the cyclone diameter to the formula of the Stokes number, which is equal to the critical particle size squared times rho of v times v over 18 times nu times d, then we can now solve for the number of cyclones. Substituting the values, we get that the n is equal to 1.88. We raise the value of 1.88 to 2, a whole number. And now we can solve for the cyclone diameter. Now, the cyclone diameter is now equal to 1.6702 meters. The last thing to do is to solve for the actual cut size. We use the formula for the Stokes number and we are going to use the values for the diameter of the cyclone separator and the characteristic velocity which we have solved earlier. We now get that the actual cut size is equal to 9.85 micrometers. We're now done with sample calculations so now let's proceed to some practical design and operation details. The effect of dust loading on efficiency. High dust loadings which is around about 5 grams per cubic meter give a higher total efficiency due to the particle enlargement through the agglomeration of particles. Cyclone types. Reverse flow cyclones have usually two types. We have the high efficiency designs and the high rate designs. For high efficiency designs, these cyclones give high recoveries and they have smaller inlet and gas outlet. However, for high-rate designs, they have lower efficiency but have lower resistance to flow that a given size will give a higher gas capacity than a high-efficiency design with the same body diameter. Abrasion. Abrasion affects the cyclone performance. This is caused by the way the cyclone was installed, operated, and the materials used for the cyclone. It usually happens in the cylindrical part just beyond the inlet opening and in the conical part near the dust discharge. Attrition of solids. Attrition is the breakup of solids in gas cyclones. Large particles are more likely to be affected by attrition than finer fractions. Attrition is most detectable in fluidized beds. 
where cyclones are used to return materials back to the fluidized bed. This cycle in the fluidized bed and cyclone happens many times per hour so the effect of attrition increases. Blockages Blockages are usually the causes of failure in cyclone separators. These are caused by overloading of the solids outlet. Several reasons why there are blockages in a cycle separator are mechanical defects such as protruding welds or bumps and chemical and physical properties of solids. Discharge hoppers and diplegs. The discharge of solids is important in a cyclone separator since it will not function properly if this is not correctly designed. Inward leakages of air causes particles to be re-entrained, so the efficiency decreases under vacuum condition. Under pressure conditions, outward leakages may also cause problems in the separation efficiency. It increases the separation efficiency slightly, but it will result in the loss of the product and some pollution in the environment which is why it is important to keep the solid discharge as gas tight as possible. Cyclones in series. Cyclones are usually connected in series to increase recovery. The primary cyclone would be of low efficiency design and the subsequent cyclones would be of increasing efficient design or smaller diameter. Cyclones in parallel. For a given cyclone geometry and operating pressure drop, the cut size achievable decreases with the cyclone size. For large gas flow rates, the cut size is so high, so the gas flow is split into several smaller cyclones operating in parallel to maintain operating pressure drop and achieve the actual cut size. This would be the last topic for the cyclone separators, which is the research and development. In this study, the performance evaluation of a new cyclone separator, they added a slotted vortex to the cyclone separator, aiming to reduce instabilities and pressure drop, which both affect the efficiency of the cyclone separator. Here are the geometrical dimensions of the cyclone separator for a separator with novel slotted vortex finder and for a separator with conventional shape vortex finder. The slotted vortex finder provided a new separation approach and improved shortcut flow. It also improved the grade efficiency. Another study on cyclone separators is this one. The numerical study of flow field in new design cyclone separators with one, two, and three tangential inlets. In this study, they used a new design for cyclone separator instead of the conventional one. The new design they have developed was based on the idea that performance increases with the vortex length. Instead of using a conical separation space, they used a cylinder with a vortex limiter. They also investigated the effect of one, two, and three tangential inlet on the performance of a cyclone separator. The result of the study showed that the cyclone separator with three inlets has the lowest pressure drop, and the cyclone with one inlet has the highest pressure drop. In terms of collection efficiency, the three inlet cyclone has the highest, while the one inlet has the lowest. In general, they recommended the use of cyclone designs with higher number of inlets. Well, that is all for the discussion of cyclone separators. Uh, thank you very much for listening.
and enjoy your day.